I'm James. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a cinema graph. Now, I'm sure you've seen these online. They are incredible images where most of the shot is actually frozen, but there's a small part that's still moving and it just keeps looping around. It's a bit like the newspapers in Harry Potter. And there is software out there that creates it, but it's really expensive. And if you've got Photoshop, you can do it really simply and you have all the tools that you need. You just need to know how to do it. So let's take a look at how it's done. So here I have my video footage already opened up in Photoshop. You just open it up like a normal image. Uh, if you just hold down Control and O and then find that file. What I'm just gonna do to get started is just hold down Control and zero just to make sure that the image is as large as possible in the image window up here and then just click on the cog over here and just make sure that loop playback is checked because we want the video to keep looping around as we're editing it just to make sure that we can see exactly how the cinema graph is going to look when it's saved as a GIF. So what we need to do next is just take the pointer here and just scroll through the video. So this video was shot on a tripod and the model remained as still as possible and the intention there was just so that she blinked and her hair moved so there we you can see we've got some lovely movement of the hair and also we've got a few blinks so let's just leave that there and I'm just going to drag that piece of footage over there to shorten it because we don't need that much so if we go back to the beginning there let's look for that blink so there we have that perfect blink so let's take that footage down to about that long and let's just hit the space bar and play it through so you can see there's a bit of a jump there and what I'm doing is just watching the hair to make sure that that doesn't jump the great thing about hair or certain types of movement like this you can match it up fairly simply okay so I think that's good we can actually fix that jump once we create the still so I'm just gonna press the space bar again to stop that and now I'm just going to click on video group 1 and hold down control shift alt and E and that's going to copy all visible layers into a still image at the top of the stack so you'll see there that just appears at the end of where the pointer is so we're just going to drag that over to the left so that it matches up the start and the finish of the video so if I just hit the space bar there you'll see we have no movement whatsoever so what you can do is just move that pointer along before you create that merge layer and find the point that you want to create the still from. But for me, that's absolutely fine there. So now what we need to do is mask in the areas where we want the uh, movement to actually occur. And that is basically just the eyes and the hair around these areas here. So go down to the bottom of the layers panel click on the layer mask icon which is a rectangle with a circle in the center and now let's just zoom into the image so that we can actually really see what we're doing so you can use all the normal tools of Photoshop which is absolutely fantastic okay so what I'm going to do now is just press B on the keyboard to set the brush tool and if you have different colors set in the foreground and background just hit D on the keyboard and that sets the defaults of black and white if white is in the foreground, just hit X and that will bring black into the foreground. So now if I use the left square bracket key, I can make my brush smaller. So I want to set the brush edge hardness to about 50%. So I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and press the right square bracket key a few times. So there you'll see that's a hard edge. Now if I press shift down again and the left square bracket key twice, that's going to take the edge hardness down to 50%. So I'm going to make this brush a tiny bit smaller and then just carefully paint in the eye area there and that one there as well. So let's have a look there. There's a tiny bit of movement there because obviously the model was moving slightly, but if we, let's just zoom out, we'll hold down control and zero and let's just run that through again. Once you're actually looking at it, from a bit more of a distance you can't really see that movement so that's going to be fine so the blinks looking good let's just zoom back in and let's mask the hair so let's get the brush tool back up I'm going to keep this nice small brush because I don't want to paint any areas other 
than those that I want to actually reveal the movement of because the model was moving ever so slightly only very very slightly but you really can notice it if you accidentally leave it in so let's just check there so we've got no movement of the arm which is great that looks quite nice and natural we've got a little bit of movement of that shoulder there so what I'm gonna do is hit X on the keyboard there so white is the foreground color and I'm just gonna let's just have a look and see how it looks if we lose that part there it may work it may not so it's not looking too good so what I'm gonna do now is hit X again bring black to the foreground make the brush even smaller and then just paint a very small area so you'll see that it's created a small amount of unevenness but that's not really much of a problem because if, if we bring it out to here you can't really notice that and let's make the brush larger again and just mask this area in here around the edge of the hair because there's a tiny bit of movement around there and that, that's looking good so control and zero so yep I think that's pretty good you can spend a lot more time doing it but for the sake of the video I'm just gonna speed through a bit more now one of the great things about doing this in Photoshop as well is that we can apply absolutely any color effects you can change brightness contrast literally you name it you can you can do that and you can even mask out different parts of the image if you're working on that still layer so I'm gonna make this shot black and white and let's just go down again let's stick a curves adjustment layer in so we can just lighten the model off ever so slightly and there you'll see we get a really nice black and white shot with that movement so there's our cinema graph there so that is a cinema graph where you have a very clear beginning and end the movement can be matched up but what do you do if the movement doesn't quite work so we're going to take a look at that in a second once I've shown you how to save the image as a GIF. So hold down Control, Shift, Alt, and S. So that's going to bring up the Save for Web dialog. And it just takes a moment to render because this is a relatively large file here. So just make sure that the color reduction algorithm is set to adaptive. Some people say use selective, but I find it creates blockiness in the shadow areas, which doesn't look very good. And just make sure that the dither algorithm is set to diffusion. And just also make sure that looping options is set to forever, because that's going to keep it looping. If you've got it set to once, it's going to play once for a few seconds and then stop. But doing this just keeps it going on and on, which is exactly what you want. And then let's just change the image size. So we'll take it from full HD and we'll set the width to 700, which is a much more web friendly size. So then simply hit save and then you can name the file and then it's going to save wherever you choose and you can upload it to the web, send it by email or whatever you want to do. So let's just cancel that. Okay, so now we have a different type of video here. So this is one where we're not going to be able to match up the movement because it's continuous, completely continuous motion of the water flowing in this waterfall here. So we have to take a slightly different approach. So let's just check that loop playback is still selected there and it is, that's great. And for this, we're only going to need a couple of seconds. So I'm just dragging over from the left because I want to shorten the footage so that I can actually reveal some of what I've just hidden a little bit later on that's going to make a lot more sense in a moment and then let's take this right hand side and we're going to drag that down so let's go for actually three seconds there so if I just hit the space bar and play there you'll see it's continuously playing but there is a little bit of a jump so we're just going to fix that jump so just hit the space bar again so it stops playing click on video group one and then hold down control and J and that's going to copy that group for us. So there you'll see we have an identical piece of footage. So drag that over to the right so that the beginning of the new piece of footage matches up with the end of the old piece. So this frame here is exactly the same as this frame here. So now if I just drag that over roughly about a second, that's revealing some of the footage that we actually hid earlier on and now I'm just gonna drag that over so the two ends match up so now 
when the footage gets to the end, and this is what we need, this is really important, this frame is identical to the frame at the beginning, and that is what creates the continuous loop. And the idea is that the loop is so perfect, the blend is so perfect, that you don't know where the video begins or it ends. So now, just drag that pointer over to the beginning of the footage, so that top bit of footage is actually still selected and then just expand that menu there and click on opacity so there you'll see that we get a small dot on the timeline and that tells us that we have an opacity control then head over to the layers panel and set the opacity down to 0% and then let's just take that pointer over to the end of that piece of footage now and just click on that dot there and you'll see that creates another opacity point but this time drag that up to 100% so now as the video footage plays this new piece at the top kicks in at 0% and then slowly the opacity increases until it's at 100% at the very end then when it loops round down to here we get that continuous loop so if I just hit the space bar we're going to see that happening and it just keeps on going so there you see you just can't tell where the footage actually begins or ends so there we we could create a gif here but we can we maintain all of that footage if that's what you want to do then by all means save it now but if you want to make some of this still then just stop the video by pressing the space bar then again like earlier on just click on video group one well this is video group one copy this time hold down Control shift alt and e so again we're merging all visible layers into a new layer at the top of the stack and this is going to be a still so if i hit the space bar there you'll see we can't see anything because it's just playing the still at the top of the stack and just click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel and then if we use the brush tool so we can actually mask in any part of this image we want to but i'm just going to focus over here at the back of the image on this well it looks like a waterfall but it's actually a weir so let's just get that in and i know that we've got a bit of mist coming off and it does actually extend over here a little bit so we might be able to pick some of that up let's just hit the space bar and see what we're getting so yeah that's looking good if you happen to make a mistake, just hit X on the keyboard to bring white into the foreground, and then you can paint over the offending area, and then switch back to black. Okay, so there we go. So that is how to get the seamless blend with a piece of footage where there is no significant beginning or end. So there are two ways to create cinemagraphs using different video footage in Photoshop.